Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. I'm just stoked you're here. I want to do a quick shout out and thank you to all the channel members. Thank you all more than you know. I appreciate each and every one of you. And thank anybody who comes in to check out my knife and EDC journey. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. If you like it and you'd like to see more and are so inclined, if you please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon, it would really help me out. So today we've got a pretty cool unboxing. I would call it a highly anticipated unboxing for me personally. Um, and it comes from my buddy, our buddy, Lefty EDC. And what is in here that I am interested in more than anything? This is my little Amazon um, unboxing knife. I'm right now in the process of finding out what they recommend for a replacement blade. Anyway, that's a whole other story. But let's see what we've got here if I've even gotten into it. I'm trying to get into it without exposing and doxing myself. Not that I really care. And I don't want to dox Brother Lefty, even though he doesn't have... Let's see if I can pull something out of here. Watch me go at this like a primate. All right. So... We've got this. I know what that is. You guys have already seen it, except that's a different color, so I'll show it to you. However, this is what I have personally been waiting for, to look at, to check out, to get a, what would we say, a preview. A preview. So there is Devo Knives. And there's our buddy Lefty EDC. Let's close up our... So, I don't know if my thumbnail gave it away. I'm pretty bad with hieroglyphics. But, as you guys may or may not know, I became a huge fan of the Devo Nip. Right? I got three. I didn't get the Jack Sparrow yet um, because it's basically... I'm tempted... But I know the carbon fiber is just slightly different. However, it is good looking. Um, and the carbon fiber, out of the three that I've got, the White Mountain Exclusives Titanium and the traditional pocket knives, all black, these are definitely heavier, more substantial knives. Of course, they're titanium, where this is carbon fiber. Um, same S90V blade. These are just great little knives. So... That's why I was so stoked when Lefty asked if I want to take a look at one of these. And this is... Let me get it out here. Damn, Lefty, you jammed it down in there. I'm trying to get it out in its slip. There we go. All right, guys, this is my first experience and preview of the nip slip. Behold. First thing I'm going to say is I've never been a fan of orange, per se. It's like if you hold me on my favorite colors orange probably wouldn't come up in the top 10 maybe because I don't think about that color because I'm weird blue green color blind don't really think in colors think more in notes but looking at this this is stunning the carbon fiber is beautiful the orange uh, flakes and the orange pivot collar are just stunning and there's literally no transition you've got a contoured handle i don't know if you guys can see that beautifully contoured and i don't feel any displacement at all 
between that titanium and that carbon fiber. And again, this is just a prototype, guys, but I'd say this is done very well. There's a half stop. <laughs> guys, okay. I am uh, going to be 100% objective, and this is just my opinion, which is to you guys should be taken with a grain of salt, because if you'll remember, if you followed the channel for any amount of time, I would not even consider a non-locking knife about a year ago, maybe less than a year ago, nine months ago. I was not into the slip joint game. However, I don't use my knives enough to where locks really matter, which just sounds kind of crazy. I'm more of a collector finesse, love the way they feel guy. But anyway, uh, long story short, I began my journey down the slip joint path and I, I'm, gonna, I'm at a loss of words, guys. I mean, this little knife, I know it'll maybe help me. Let's look at it side by side. with a regular nip, the nip slip versus the nip. So one little tiny thing I noticed, which is a nothing, and that could have been my sharpening, but the blade looks to be 100% flat. Look at the grind on this. I don't know who and which prototype this is. Um, I don't know if this is the OEM they've decided to go with for the nip slip. But I can tell you, look how thin that blade is. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, I am in 100% on the nip slip. I don't know what the blade steel, the final blade steel is going to be. I'm guessing S90V, but Colin and Lefty might throw in something crazy. I don't know. I should know more. When I do a review on this, this is just an unboxing. I will, um, I will have some more details. Holy shit. Guys, remember that thing I always refer to sometimes, therapeutic cutting? I was watching MC earlier, and he was talking about bite. How if you can chop at the paper, to him, that's a very good indication of sharpness and the type of angles and stuff that it leaves. I've always been a paper cutter, right? Because to me, that's therapeutic. That's how I'm going to be using the knife. Even if it's as pathetic as me sitting in front of an empty Amazon box cutting up a coupon book. But I got MC's point about if you chop at the paper, that was me not holding the paper right, you can gauge a lot about the sharpness, about how it cuts into that paper. And guys, I can tell you from the sound it makes going through, and this is just a prototype, so the one, you know, this is not a production model, but this little guy, whoever is the OEM on this little nip slip, who I did not ask, um, I do not know, I should, and I will, I'll let you know, if they know when I do a review, who the final OEM is going to be on this, but if I was looking at this one, I would buy it, like right now, um, so I don't know if they've got better samples, but I can tell you guys, and you can hopefully see it, just when I show it to you, the choil is masterfully done. I'm a kind of medium hand guy, kind of a smaller handed guy around the guys that I hang out with. Um, but the choil is so forgiving and so generous and the thinness of this freaking blade is next level. Guys, I know I'm spending a little more time on this. I have been after this little knife, just to see it, to experience it. As soon as these guys 
came in, right? The nip to me, I, I kid Kevin, and I do it all in jokingly, that it's a baby Jaeger, and I don't mean that in that it looks like the baby Jaeger. The Jaeger just checks so many boxes for me as an EDC knife um, that the nip slip was so good, I had to get it three times, and I carry them all. Um, the nip slip and Troy's slip the way he's, the orange thread, I mean, it's just, guys, it's freaking gorgeous. All I can say is, I'm in, I'm a fan, and if you guys have been like I was a year ago, and you're like, I'm not really interested in the slip joints, not that big of a deal, I would think that this, kind of like the QVIS Vanish was, to me, it wasn't my first slip joint, but it was the one that really kind of got me realizing the possibilities of carrying a small slip joint. I would say that the nip slip, the Devo nip slip, would make someone an awesome entry into non-locking. Guys, this knife is not going to close on your hand. I'm pushing it with my thumb, with my dirty thumb. And if it did, the choil... If it were to close on my hand, I've got a choil that's protecting my finger. So from a safety standpoint, I mean, it's done super well. I'm just watching to see if it opens up and I start bleeding. That would be funny, wouldn't it? I'll point to my ceremonious fail before that blood spot. But no, guys, the dip, the Devo nip slip, I am totally stoked. I, um, I'm going to drop this in my pocket. I'm going to stick over Jack. And I am stoked that Lefty's letting me check it out early. Move my other nips out of the way. Now let's take a look at this Caladan. If you guys are watching this on Tuesday afternoon, the 2nd, I released, ooh, this is the one that I did not link, the DLC, but we talked about it. Perfect timing. So guys, this is kind of also an amend amendment or addendum, amendment, addendum, I'll say addendum in my description, to my um, Caladan V2 uh, review. Because one thing I had to write in the description, because I forgot to mention, is that they also, in addition to changing the placement of Jim's Maker's Mark, right, to the blade, and then we talked about the pivot being clean because, again, Jim's maker's mark was transferred to the blade. The other thing that is different between V1 and V2 that I wasn't aware of because I did not take apart V1 is V1 did not have a captive pivot and V2 does have a captive pivot. So, captive pivot, clean, sterile pivot, Maker's Mark moving from pivot to blade steel are really the only changes in this S90V sweet-ass dagger based on Jim's Excalibur, which was a custom fixie that you cannot find. Um, you can see some pictures of them on Arizona Knives. This one where the one that I was showing, let me just grab them. This is more of a frame lock frame lock than what I call an inset frame lock, which the mechanics are probably identical. So when I look at, let's look at the V2 first. See, your frame exists in the same, probably cut to the exact same, well, Maybe not, but it's a little bit differently done. So you've got the liner lock, or you can choose the DLC version with this frag handle, which I really like the frag handle, and I love the way they do their DLC-coated uh, blade. It is still hand-rubbed satin. You can still see that. It's absolutely stunning. The action is as smooth and next level and the word that I was looking for to describe the action, I have not come up with anything better than feels five times more expensive because it's just got a very luxurious action. I couldn't think of any sweet euphemistic words to describe 
tactile experiences that I'm personally having with an eye. So I can just tell you it's excellent. And they're available. The link that I left in my review today takes you to the page that has the different offerings with the uh, carbon fiber. If you go back to page one on Tia's website, that's where you'll find the DLC versions and the different configurations that are there. You still have that same wonderful access to the lock bar with, I think, what is just kind of masterful jimping. You've got what looks like really good lock geometry, the way this blade locks up, probably about mm, 40%, something like that. Um, yeah, and the same ergonomic excellence, even though I've got a little bit of frag for grip, I still don't feel that clip. I still don't feel, of course, this particular variation is, of course, softer because there's no frag. I like the frag. It does not add any sharp or hard edges to the knife. I do feel the transitions here on the scales because it's full titanium. But that is not a negative thing. I am blue knuckling this, squeezing it just as hard as I can, and it feels great in hand. It still has. Hey, hello. Hello. I am called Titanium DLC Guy. No, anyway, it still looks like a parrot when it's closed, but that's me being an idiot from the first time when I really didn't understand the design element that that, and I wasn't aware of the Excalibur and how it kind of presented. So I say that all joking, guys. I think the knife looks absolutely stunning. This is the V1. Again, changes being the clip or the, uh, the pivot. This is not captive. This is captive. You had skeleton blade works on the show, or on the show side, you had nothing, where now you have the Tuya logo. And on the clip side, you had Tuya S90V. Now you have skeleton blade works, Gems Maker's Mark, and S90V. So, at when Lefty and I talked the other night, Saturday night, and I told him that I had one of these already coming, that um, I already had it actually, that David sent me. He was like, Oh, I thought he didn't send you that one, but I'm so glad that Lefty went ahead and sent this. Um, I won't do another review on it, but it shows you guys another variation. And what I'll do is I'll go into my YouTube studio and I'll link this video as the next video of this the Tuya V2 Caladan review. But yeah, guys, um, my personal preference, as much as I love the carbon fiber, my personal preference, the action is no different, so it's still just wonderful with the frame lock. It doesn't, I didn't ask Lefty if it was left-handed friendly, but for a righty, I don't feel, even putting pressure on that frame lock, any issue in deployment. And I think I'm a DLC guy. I haven't always been. I'm looking at these two knives. They're both equally beautiful for different reasons. That's why the knife game's so fun, because one day you might love something, or not like something, like me with slip joints, and then find yourself hunting them. But these are beautiful. Both knives are. I mean, so they're looks that will pretty much accompany anyone's taste, right? And if I'm not mistaken, the DLC, I will, um, in this review, I will put a link to the DLC version so you guys can look at it i'm not sure if there's a cost difference for some reason i did not think there was but i don't remember because i wasn't focusing on it as much but yeah guys that is the tuya kaladin v2 that lefty was nice enough to send with what i think is the win of 2024 so far the Devo Nip Slip. And I'm going to hang on to this because I'm going to record a video that I'm going to put out. I've been gelling it on my head for a while, but I've still got, of all the knives that I give away, it's odd the ones that stay in my collection. And Colin Maispierre, CM Knife Design, was a knife maker who I liked and bought long before he and Lefty probably even met. They might have known each other, but Devo Knives was not a thing yet. So I was going to put together a video that 
talked about the designs I've got from Colin, from Tucson, from uh, Kubi, from um, Tuya, the uh, Mutt, just some other designs, right? And then talk about what I, my perception on why Devo knives is so successful, why the knives that they put out are knives that people appear to want. I know they kind of hit my hot buttons every time, but that's a whole nother video. Hopefully I'll be able to include this guy in it when I'm talking about it. But yeah, guys, the nip slip, what a beautiful little knife. I will at least get one. Um, I hope they don't make too many variations. I'd be happy if they just kept it with this orange variation. So I don't feel like I need to get multiples. Um, but yeah, thinner by a lot than our nip. Don't have our lanyard holder, but we really do we need it since we've got a slip or we're going to use it as a slip. Again, just a prototype, guys, but I'm stoked, beyond stoked. So that's the nip slip unboxing. Get y'all some more information. I appreciate y'all sticking it out. If you made it this long, it was really a unboxing and a review update, we'll call it. Guys, I love each and every one of you. I appreciate you more than you know. Um, all I ever ask and I actually truly hope is you'll look out for your buddy or your foe, the guy or gal to your left. Keep an eye out. Look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.